Richards channel, where you always learn a multitude of key concepts to improve your painting skills. Hey there. So these are all the things you're going to need if you're starting out a oil painting. Uh, that list can be endless, but this is your starting package, I would say. So let me go over those things. First thing, of course, you need some coffee or hot chocolate, hot chocolate in my case. And <clears throat> once you have that energy, then you can go in full force, right? So, yeah, of course you need uh, canvases. Uh, this is 11 by 14, give you kind of an idea of how big of a size that might be. And <clears throat> I would say starting out, try to start with smaller canvases. Don't get into really large things because it just takes too long to get a painting completed. Um, eight by 10, 9 by 12, 11 by 14. That's probably some good sizes to start with. Um, but let me point out, 9 by 12, it's hard to get frames for 9 by 12s. So 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 might be the way you'd want to go. Um, something you may not have thought of is a, a brush washer, or I call them a thinner bucket. You know, it's where you put your solvent. These are great, and I would highly suggest that you get one, particularly if you're going to a class and so you're having to transport solvent with you. Um, you know, a baby food jar will work, but those lids pop off pretty easily. Mason jar works. They do seal down pretty good, um, so that, that's an okay thing. But what you'll notice is, is that your solvent, um, as you begin to use it and it builds up kind of sludge from, you know, washing your brush off over and over again, uh, that it will cause your solvent to get very murky and muddy and gooky. And you don't want that. Um, and you can avoid it with one of these. So uh, a brush washer or a thinner bucket, as I call them again, uh, has a little basket in it. These are great. The little basket has a bar for you to kind of rub your brush against so that you can kind of help get that sludge out of your brush and into the solvent. But also, the sludge will go on through here down into the bottom of this little metal bucket. And so uh, you always have clean solvent up here where you're working from. Also, when you're transporting them, they have a rubber seal around the lid, and so whenever you put this on with the latches that come around, and I would suggest if you are transporting, uh, to get one that has three latches on it instead of two. It holds it down really nice and firm, and you won't have problems with it leaking if it were to fall over in the car. Another good thing is to get one that has a wide base. A lot of them are squared off, and if it rounds out at the bottom, it's much more stable. Uh, other things that you're gonna need are brushes. Wide, wide variety of brushes out there. So um, I don't think the style of brush that you use is as crucial as the quality of the brush that you use. A lot of people when they start out, a lot of students, um, they will just buy like a big 10 pack of brushes or something. And I want you to notice this, that the, the bristles on the brushes are all spread out and all frazzly looking. It, it makes it hard to have control with what you're doing with your painting. So the, the type of brushes that I like personally are flats or brights. That's those brushes that have that squarish sort of look to them. You'll notice that a flat is a little longer than a bright. And so the, the bright bristles, um, because they're closer to the ferrule, they stay a little firmer together and uh, you, you get a little more control with them. The uh, bristles don't sway over as you're painting on your canvas. So uh, these are great. I really like them and good, uh, a good uh, flat or a good bright, if you look at it from the side, what you'll see is, is it is sharp as a razor. And if you have a, a brush that's really sharp like that, um, you can use the corner point of it to do really fine detail work, even with a large brush. 
So these are what I suggest to you. Some brands that I would suggest to you. Uh, Robert Simmons, I, I think, is just really premium brushes. Their hog's hair bristle brush is, um, it has natural bristles that are really stiff. And so you can do certain textures like an old barn sort of texture with those. Um, so the Robert Simmons Signet brushes are those and they're really good. Uh, Robert Simmons Sapphire brushes, the blue handled sapphires, uh, are a synthetic brush that are just smooth as silk. And so I really like those. Um, cheaper brushes that are still high quality, uh, some Princeton brushes or something that you might look at. And um, if you're in an area where there's a Hobby Lobby, <clears throat> Hobby Lobby's uh, Masters uh, brushes, Masters Touch brushes, are actually pretty good brushes. Um, so, that, that, you know, there are brushes in local stores that you can get that are pretty good. Here's what I would suggest to you though to watch out for. You will walk in and see a brush that has that nice sharp crisp edge on it and <clears throat> when they manufacture the brushes they put starch on those brushes so that it stays like that so it's nice but as soon as you use it it breaks the starch the sizing and then they spread like crazy lots of times so I would suggest this walk into the store Take your finger and move it back and forth on the bristles a few times. If it's still nice and sharp, you got you a good brush. If it has three hairs sticking straight out to the side, uh, maybe you could trim those. But uh, if all of them spread out like that, mm, put it back. You probably need to get a different brush. Okay, a different brush that isn't a brush at all is a palette knife and that is used for painting it's also used for mixing paint really good for mixing paint you can see my other videos on that on why you might want to use a palette knife always on mixing paint um, <clears throat> a fan brush is something you may have seen bob ross use many times but you'll notice mine's all beat up and broken I have another video on how to modify your fan brush in order to be able to paint grasses. This is what I call a modified fan brush and it is excellent for being able to do that. Great tool. Um, <clears throat> paper towels. When you're painting, you're constantly having to clean your paint brush off and I suggest this might sound silly, but a specific brand, Bounty Paper Towels. I'll tell you why. It is because Bounty is both kind of cloth-like and paper-like. And because of that, you can create certain kinds of textures in your paintings by actually painting with a paper towel. And then, of course, you want to be able to clean things constantly. So you're going to want paper towels. You're going to want a place to be able to mix your paint so you need a palette and there are a variety of palettes most of which when you go to supply stores you're going to see those little round palettes that have nice places to put your paint out and around the edge and then in the middle is a nice place to mix one color of paint before you're going to have to clean it out and start over again because it's just not big enough so you want a nice big palette. So um, there is paper that you can buy, so it comes almost like a sketch pad where you can pull pieces out, um, and that's called palette paper. Um, so, uh, and lots of them come toned gray, which is a, a good color to mix paint on so you can see your colors really well. Um, all of this that I'm telling you is going to be in the description down below. There'll be links that you can go specifically and see each of these items, um, affiliate links, so you can go directly to that and buy it if you want to, or just kind of browse and check it out. Um, but also, um, it, you'll find a link below for these glass palettes. I make these myself and uh, this is mine. That's the reason it looks so beat up. I've been using it for years. But um, that glass palette, strong, doesn't break easily. And um, <clears throat> when you go to clean up, you can just scrape off with a little flat blade scraper like that. 
Um, I put um, uh, gray enamel paint and bake it onto the back so that when you're looking at your colors, you see your colors very clearly. So you can go to, that link will take you to my website and you can get one of those on there if you would like. Let's talk paint. So when you're starting out, what I suggest is to start out with a limited palette. So in other words, only the essential colors. So another thing you're gonna need is paint. So when you're starting out, a good way to start out is with a limited palette. That means just as few colors of paint as possible. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is, is that starting out, it's expensive to get all of this all at one time. And so if you don't have to get certain paint colors, that would be great. Um, <clears throat> another really important reason if you're gonna develop as a painter is a limited palette uh, kind of causes you to mix paint more. You're not just buying a color for every possibility. And uh, a good limited palette, the one that I use, is this. It is each of the primary colors, so red, yellow, and blue, uh, in a warm and cool version of that, and if possible, a light and dark version all at the same time. I'll show you what I mean. So <clears throat> I use a lemon yellow, and a lemon yellow is a nice, cool, light yellow, and then a, um, a cadmium yellow, which is uh, much darker than a lemon. It's not real hugely dark. Um, you don't find really dark yellows, but um, it's a much warmer yellow. And so uh, there's that. And then when we look at the blues, I like to use either a Severs blue, a manganese blue, or a cerulean blue. Those are all light, warm blues. And so you've got it light and also warm. And then you have a French ultramarine blue, which is a dark blue, and it's a very cool blue. Now a cobalt blue is nice as well. Okay, then reds, I like to go with a nice solid cad red, cadmium red, and then an alizarin crimson. An alizarin crimson is a very dark, dark color of red, and there are a variety of alizarin crimsons. I suggest that you get the very dark versions of that. Um, so it's a cool, dark version as opposed to a warm, lighter version of red. And then to kind of round out the palette, I always like to have a uh, burnt sienna, not a burnt umber, but a burnt sienna, not a raw sienna, but a burnt sienna. It is a reddish brown and it is really good for doing something called neutralizing your colors. And then last but not least, you can't get away without it, is a nice white and a titanium white is a really good way to go. You'll notice most of the colors I have here are either uh, Windsor and Newton or they are uh, Grumbacher. I like both of those brands. There are a variety of really good brands of paint though. Um, <clears throat> so this uh, Georgian is a really excellent paint, really like that. Um, it, definitely Williamsburg paints. Uh, that's what this cadmium yellow is, just excellent paint. So uh, there's a lot of different ones, and what you'll find is, is a wide variety of prices. Don't go with the cheapest paints because the price will reflect quality, and it, it won't be very long before you're like, gosh, I really don't like this paint. It's not doing what I want. Um, one of the things that I'll, I'll kind of caution you about is uh, with the Windsor and Newton, what you want to get is artist oil colors. Um, if you can get that, that's, that's the best um, Windsor and Newton. But Windsor and Newton also offers a student grade paint and uh, that is called, uh, you'll notice instead, it'll say Windsor and Newton on it, but right here where this says artist oil colors, it will say Winton, W-I-N-T-O-N, and Winton does not have the same amount of 
pigment in it so um, it, it it makes for when you mix it not as rich of colors you, you'll find that that it won't be what you really want so these primary colors in warm and cool with white and burnt sienna is a great way to start if you were to add an extra color or two in there what i would suggest is purple and orange because the chroma straight out of the tube with pre-mixed colors like this is so rich and beautiful it's great so a cadmium orange or if you can still get it grumbacher um, <clears throat> It's a, a yellow orange, and it, it is uh, it's cadmium barium yellow orange. This is great stuff. Um, and then a um, dioxazine violet is a really, really good purple. So um, if you can't afford all of these uh, pretty expensive paints, what I suggest is, is, you know, go with Wenton or something like that that's much cheaper, but as you run out of it, you buy one tube of good paint to replace it with so that um, eventually you're going to have everything you want and need and it'll be so much nicer. So I think that'll get you started pretty good. Um, I hope you come out and paint. Maybe you'll join me at paint class. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you're getting a lot of value out of all of these videos that we're posting on the artist Craig Richards channel. Um, you know, there's all kinds of how-tos, there's the weekly paint class, uh, and there's occasional outings like uh, going out in plain air somewhere. We're going to be going down the Yak and River in the spring, uh, going to museums, things like that. I think you'd enjoy those. Um, if you're getting value out of these, then uh, do the, uh, like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, you have to subscribe in order to be able to hit the notification bell, and that's for you. Um, the reason I'm saying that is so that uh, you know when the next paint class is coming out, so that if you're working on a painting and we're doing it again the next week, the, you can follow along with us. And leave us comments, you know, not just for me, but for the students as well. Say, you know, Deb, you did a great painting. Kitty, you did a great painting. Or Craig, you did a great demonstration this week. Um, that builds us up. And we want to build you up as well. We want to help you to keep painting and keep growing. You're doing great. Uh, don't tell yourself you're not. Um, you are doing wonderful. Just keep at it and you'll learn and grow each week with us. So, happy painting. Okay.